breaking news into the Fanfare News feed. This is Miami confirming that Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill, he is under investigation by Miami Day Police. Now our Jacqueline Quinn is live in Miami Gardens right now with more on this. Jacqueline, what were you able to find out? Well, we have reached out to Miami Day Police, and so far they have confirmed that Tyree Kill is under investigation for an incident that happened over the weekend. Now, our partners at the Miami Herald have also reached out to police, and they have told us that the alleged assault and battery happened Sunday afternoon at the Hallover Beach Marina, but they say police were not notified about what happened until later on Monday. Miami-Dade police detectives were able to talk to the alleged victim who was hit by Hill. And so far, there are no charges, but their investigation, again, still underway. Now, in a statement to the Herald, a Dolphins spokesperson said, we are aware of the situation and have been in contact with Tyreek, his representatives, and the NFL. We will reserve further comment at this time. Now, this is not the first time that Tyreek Hill is facing allegations of assault. The 29-year-old pro bowler actually pled guilty uh, back in college to then punching and choking his then pregnant girlfriend. Again, we're going to be following this and to see how this impacts the Miami Dolphins. That's what the news was last night. There were a ton of people out on YouTube. There are a ton of people on Twitter that were saying that Tyreek Hill was not going to be charged, and it was all false. It was all disinformation, as they like to say. I'm not sure why people jump to that conclusion. I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of the YouTubers not actually being in South Florida, not actually being able to see the news and what's transpiring down here. I live in Boca, so I get to see all the time what's happening and who's talking about what. And it was never the case that Tyreek was completely dismissed and that the investigation was over. That was all disinformation from people outside the area not understanding what's going on. So the video you just saw happened last night. That was last night's newscast. And then today, things started changing. Things started evolving and news started coming in very quickly. But even last night, the local news told everybody that some of these guys don't have big followings and some of the YouTubers and Dolphins fans don't know to check these guys, but they were told last night, and I also posted that him being cleared of charges and that Miami-Dade police weren't going to be going forward with an investigation, that was a complete lie. Check this out. This is from Ian Margol from WPLG Channel 10 down here in South Florida in the Miami area. He says, per the Miami-Dade police, directly from the police, the investigation into the alleged battery by Tyreek Hill continues. Any reports saying it's over are not accurate. That was one out of four. This was at 8.43 last night. So people should have known then that stuff was still going to be happening. Then down to, we also just received a report from the day of the incident. I have that report. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the actual police report. It says the Kelly Fishing Fleet employee saw two women on one of the company's boats without permission and went to tell them to get off. Why were they on these people's boats? I have no idea what makes you think that you can just get on somebody's boat. That's insane. Number three here, the report continues saying there was then an argument and Hill had to be moved away from the alter altercation. But as he was being pushed away by a member of his group, the subject, meaning Hill, reached out and slapped the victim on the back of the neck with an open hand. Number four, he allegedly continued to try and charge at the victim but was restrained by others he was with and then left the scene. Full narrative posted below, which is the police report, which I'm going to show you. Now, it's uh, early morning on Thursday morning, and things have evolved from what Ian had reported, where they're now actually telling us that Tyreek Hill most likely will be charged as the victim has indeed decided to press charges. So here was the newscast at 5.07 this morning. Take a look at this. Listen to this. It's amazing. Well, we're learning new details in the alleged assault involving Miami Dolphins wide receiver to recount. An incident report has been released by Miami-Dade police showing the victim has decided to press charges in this case. And although police did not name Hill on the, or the victim in the report, officers described the incident as an argument that then turned 
turned physical. Police saying that on Sunday, the alleged victim who works for Kelly Fishing Fleet was on was working on a charter boat at a marina right off of uh, Hollover Park when he noticed two women on the charter boat without permission. Well, please. What were they doing on the boat without permission? Uh, you can't go to Hertz and rent a car and just get in a car without having a, a rental agreement. You just can't walk into a marina here in South Florida and get on a boat. That's absurd. I just don't understand the mentality of somebody thinking they can, can just get on a boat. And it gets very interesting is because a lot of people thought that the videos we saw afterwards with, you know, uh, Drew Rosenhaus and Tyreek and having a party on the boat, I don't think that was the same boat. I think that's going to come out as well. Wait till you see the police report. He's saying an argument then broke out between the employees and the group that was on the boat. Then in the police report, it says that that's when one of the employees was slapped in the neck by an unidentified person, presumably Hill. Police say that the person... Presumably Hill because... Tyreek Hill hasn't been named in either the police report or any other reports, but when you read the when you read the police report, you're going to understand why. And then ran towards the victim, but then he was restrained. Police say that the incident was also captured on surveillance video. The Miami Dolphins say they're aware of the allegation. Boom. That's the part I wanted everybody to hear. It has now been confirmed. The entire incident has been captured on video. That doesn't bode well for Tyreek whatsoever, because right now they're calling him the unidentified subject, as you see on some police shows, unsub for short. This unsub, they have not identified as Tyreek. That's because that's part of the investigative process to make sure you're, you know, you're basically charging the right person. And the video is going to allow them to do that. And of course, the Miami Dolphins have completely clammed up. And they have no comment at this time. So the Dolphins have closed rank. Tyreek has closed ranks. The Miami Dade Police Department is charging him. And let's look at the police report that was filed. This is the actual police reports redacted co according to the Marcy's Law, which you don't give out victims' names. And because we don't have confirmation that it was Tyreek, they've basically redacted his name, too. But I'm going to read along for you. On Monday, June 19th, I, the officer, responded to the Kelly Fishing Fleet located at 10,800 Collins Avenue in reference to a battery that occurred on Sunday, June 18th. Upon arrival, I made contact with the victim, name redacted, advised that while at work, he observed two unknown females on one of the fishing charter boats without permission. Again, that's insane. You should not be on someone else's property. He advised his boat captain of the incident, and they went out to advise the females to get off the boat. While the boat captain instructed the females to get off the boat, a verbal altercation occurred between the employees of the fishing fleet and the females on the boat and the males in their group. So this was an entourage that was boarding this boat without permission, without the captain's knowledge. Let's continue. While the boat captain instructed the females to get off the boat, a verbal altercation occurred between the employees of the fishing fleet and the females on the boat. While the subject is being pushed away from the altercation, the subject reached out and slapped the victim on the back of the neck with an open hand. The subject continued to be pushed away by a member of his group. The subject charged towards the victim, but was restrained by several people within his group. So understand what that says right there. And this is, I think, where the NFL is really going to have a problem. You have a little verbal altercation. You start talking about something, and while you're arguing with somebody, you reach out and slap somebody. Bad enough. Now you're restrained and pushed apart. You're not up against the, the, the victim at this point. But then you break away and charge the victim with the intent to do more bodily harm. The NFL is going to have a field day with this. There's no reason that you intended to charge the victim if you didn't intend on throwing more of a beat down on this guy. That's one of the big problems of this police report is that it wasn't a quick altercation, backhand slap on the back of the neck and just walk away. He charged the guy on the boat. He went after him and had to be physically restrained. That's going to be problematic. And, I, and I've seen people all over Twitter defending Tyreek, saying it's not that big a deal. 
conflating things with something Devonte Adams did at a game a, a couple years back or whatever, or last year. It's not the same. This guy, number one, they were trespassing. Understand that right now. The people were trespassing. That's a crime in and of itself, whether it'll be charged, I don't know, but you're on somebody's boat without permission. That's called trespassing. Then you get into a verbal altercation and you slap a guy. Then you charge a guy. So there's a number of different layers here that both the Miami Dade police and the NFL can investigate. This does not bode well. So let's continue here. The subject continued to be pushed away by a member of his group. The subject charged towards the victim, but was restrained. The subject fled in unknown means and direction. Fled. So before the cops could get there, Tyreek got the hell out. Uh, the victim further stated an unknown patron advised him that the subject was, and they got it redacted, Tyreek Hill, because it's still an active investigation. So you don't name things until you absolutely confirm it. However, the victim could not provide the patron's information. The incident was captured in video surveillance cameras. Understand, this is the police report that was obtained by a FOIA. And the FOIA goes back to June 19th. So people have known today's June 22nd. For three days, people have known that there was a video surveillance camera that caught the entire brouhaha. There were people on Twitter and YouTube saying there was no video. There is video. The NFL is going to have video as they investigate this. Uh, no visible injuries were observed. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Let's continue. Uh, the key, um, the Kelly Fishing Fleet manager, unredacted there, advised that she interacted with the group prior to the incident. This is really interesting. She advised that approximately 13,3500 hours, 1335, that would be about 135 regular time. The group spoke to her about renting a charter boat. Miss Mills, I guess that's the woman who works for the company, advised that the group did not rent a boat due to the high cost. What? So they didn't rent the boat that they were on because of the high cost. How high of a cost could it have been? I mean, I've rented boats down there. We've done charters, big charters. I mean, you're talking about a guy who makes millions of dollars and he didn't want to rent the boat. He didn't want to take the boat. It was probably six to a thousand dollars. That's all it costs. That's all it costs to rent one of these boats for a couple hours. She advised that prior to her leaving at 1530, and I understand that's two hours later, two hours later, the group left. She did, she did not witness the incident, the woman in the booth. Due to the delay of the incident report, no other witnesses were on scene. Case card issued, and BWC is obviously the initials for the responding officer. But what I really want to pay attention here is they're on somebody's boat. They're out there doing whatever they want to do on somebody else's boat. They then find out that they don't want to pay what the boat costs. So all the pictures you saw of the party and everything else was on a different boat. This was one they wanted to rent. They thought it was too expensive. Tyreek and the guy get in an argument. He gets slapped. Tyreek takes off. Two hours later, they're like, no, we're not going to you know, take this boat. So there's a lot more that's going to come out. Just in the last 24 hours, there's been a deluge. And I, and I advise people to make sure you're following the right source. I, like I said, I live here in South Florida. I see all these newscasts. I'm not relying on anybody on Twitter. I'm looking directly at the news here and police reports. There's no, there's no reason to speculate. It says it right there in black and white what happened. So where does it go from here? Can't tell you but it doesn't bode well for Tyreek Hill and the Miami Dolphins. Now, this type of thing is probably just a misdemeanor. It's not a huge crime. Given Tyreek's history, you know the NFL is gonna step in. What are they gonna do? I don't know. This is an off-season incident. Are they gonna try to suspend for a couple games? Are they just gonna fine him or something for the personal conduct policy? I'm not sure, but people who are brushing this off Aren't, aren't thinking clearly. This is, a, this is a crime that was committed. A crime was committed. They are now gonna take it from the investigative portion of the crime and look at the prosecutorial aspect of the crime. So this isn't going away. It's too late to stroke a check. The guy has decided to press charges. Now, 
Tyreek has nothing to do with it. His attorneys can get involved. He's going to have to lawyer up and be quiet. And just going into preseason camp in less than a month, this isn't something the Miami Dolphins need to be dealing with. Not with all the other stuff that's going on with the Miami Dolphins, wondering about Tua's health, none of this stuff. And now you throw this distraction into the mix where every reporter is going to be frothing at the mouth, trying to figure out what's going to be happening. You got, you're going to have the NFL down at the facility looking at videotapes. You're going to have the DA, I mean, the state's attorney looking at things. This doesn't bode well for the Dolphins. Make sure you stay in tune to what's going on because this could affect the season. God forbid he gets suspended. Man, Katie bar the door. I'll be looking at this very closely. Follow me if you'd like to hear more information and uh, fins up. But whew, this is this is bad, really bad. Talk to you soon. Is anybody catching on to this Barry guy?